Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are still working on King Richard II and we are still in Act 2, Scene 1. Today we get to hear from Northumberland, who's just, he's another nobleman and he's another nobleman who really doesn't like the way that King Richard is governing and he specifically doesn't like the fact that King Richard has let these sort of commoners become his, <clears throat> his advisors, the Bushy Baggett and Green. So quick recap, earlier in the scene, um, actually, let's go back a little bit further than that. We have Henry, uh, Henry Bolingbroke, otherwise known as Henry Hereford, was banished for six years um, as part of his punishment for getting into a, a sort of almost battle with Thomas Mowbray because Thomas Mowbray probably killed the Duke of Gloucester, who was Richard's uncle, and Richard probably told Mowbray to do it. So Henry, <clears throat> Henry wasn't too thrilled with all of that, but he's been banished. Um, John of Gaunt, earlier in this scene, gave Richard a piece of his mind and said, you're, you're running this country into the ground and you need to get better about it and be a better king. And Richard really didn't like that. And then John of Gaunt went into the next room and died. And Richard was like, great, now that he's dead, we can take all of his money and use it to go fight oh, this war that's starting to happen in Ireland. And Richard himself wants to go to Ireland to fight the war. So yesterday we had the Duke of York sort of railing on railing on Richard for taking Gaunt's money because Bolingbroke is Gaunt's son. So now that Gaunt has died, Henry of Hereford, Henry Bolingbroke, is actually like the new Gaunt. And yesterday York's point was, hasn't Gaunt always been a, a good and loyal citizen and hasn't his son, you know, he's a, he's a legitimate son, so that's actually his money that you're taking to go fight this war in Ireland, and I very strongly disagree with that. And Richard was like, thanks for your opinion, bye. And <laughs> York left, <clears throat> and then Richard's like, okay, fine, to appease him, we'll make him like Lord Governor of England while I'm in Ireland fighting this war, and let's go get me ready to go fight this war. So <clears throat> he and the Queen leave, and we're left with Northumberland, Willoughby, and Ross. And Willoughby and Ross are just a couple of other noblemen sitting around, and they start talking about how messed up this whole situation is, and that this was such a bad idea, and they very strongly disapprove of the king taking Gaunt's inheritance to go fight a war in Ireland. And <clears throat> Northumberland is sort of like egging them on, and because they don't necessarily want to speak openly badly about the king, even though they are very against him in this moment. But Northumberland's like, uh, Northumberland's like, no, 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 go ahead. It's okay, you can say it here. Like, we can share it. So he's, he's sort of needling at them a little bit, and, and they're like, yes, we would like, to, we would like to do something about this. You know, the king needs to be put in his place. And Northumberland is like, well, I have some news. And they're like, what's going on? And he says, then thus, I have heard from Port Le Blanc, a bay in Britain, received intelligence that Harry, Duke of Hereford, Reynold Lord Colbum, that late broke from the Duke of Exeter, his brother, Archbishop, late of Canterbury, Sir Thomas Erpingham, Sir John Rainston, Sir John Norbury, Sir Robert Waterton, and Francis Quint, all these well furnished by the Duke of Brittany, with eight tall ships, 3,000 men of war, are making hither with all due expedience, and shortly mean to touch our northern shore. Perhaps they had ere this, but that they stay the first departing of the king for Ireland. If then we shall shake off our slavish yoke, imp out our drooping country's broken wing, redeem from broken pawn the blemished crown, wipe off the dust that hides our scepter's gift, and make high majesty look like itself, away with me and post to Ravenspur. But if you faint as fearing to do so, stay and be secret, and myself will go. So what he's saying is he has heard that Bolingbroke is coming back and he's been outfitted with ships and men from France, from Brittany in France, and he's coming back and Bolingbroke plans to land on England's northern shores. Um, and he's saying, let's go meet them at Ravenspur so that we can help them overthrow Richard. That's what we're, that's what we're gonna do because we need to overthrow Richard in order to, to bring to bring like the crown back to, to the glory that it's supposed to be. And apparently uh, Northumberland is also 
like I don't know if they were planning on landing before this or not, but since they've heard that Richard is going to Ireland, they're waiting for him to leave. So as soon as Richard leaves for Ireland, Bolingbroke is going to come back and try to overthrow the country. So this is what's going on, and it's super fun. And he finishes saying this, and he's like, if, if you're good with this, come with me. If you're not, stay here, keep your mouth shut, and I'm going to go by myself. And both Ross and Willoughby are like, boom, let's go. Let's go do this. And that's how Act 2, Scene 1 ends. And I will see you tomorrow for more as we start to dig further into this overthrow of England. What do you think? Is he successful? I don't know. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.